The Shop 2, The Apartment Written and read by W.P. Thrift You can find me at Lantis Armstrong on Twitter Chapter 5 Do You Know Him? Yes or No? Miss Peacock's tail feathers flared out in joy at the sight of Bowman showing up for his first day of work. Of course, normally it's male peacocks that have all the pretty tail feathers, but these that she wore were her husband's. She had wasted no time plucking and neutering him. Just one more benefit of being part of the Biscuit Dye program. She masqueraded as a normal grocery store manager, but her true identity lied elsewhere. After glossing over Bowman's terrible resume, which referenced his own farts as marketable assets on no fewer than three occasions, she was just about to not hire him until her boss ordered her to do so. But you're after the one that got hired at the Circle M! Cuckoo! She argued. He's an ally to Solid! Her boss barked back. Kill him! That's an order! I'll take care of Solid myself if I have to. Which is unlikely, given the new employee's survival rate. Cuckoo! Circle M has nothing on my store! I promise you this, boss! She had given her word, and she would see it done. She turned to go down the hidden elevator shaft to enter the store proper, but her boss appeared from the shadows, brandishing a knife, which he quickly put to her thick neck while slamming her against the wall. I know what you're doing. Liquid? She asked, shocked and confused. Fuck you! Why are you saying that like you know me? You are my boss! What's wrong with you? Did you hit your head? Liquid, a youthful man with long, dark hair flowing out beneath a thick camouflage bandana, with a black Kevlar vest on over his skin-tight stealth suit, had a sudden flash of confusion, causing him to step back away from her, though he continued to press the knife into her neck with both hands, daring her to move. Looking over at the security monitors which lined the walls in this hidden room, he saw Bowman entering the store. Wait, that's not solid, he said. I told you that before! But you said to hire him anyway, and then eliminate him! go Miss Peacock said angrily. Out of price low! The secret haven for all of your crazy projects will be his grave! Stop talking to me like you know me! Liquid shot back at her. Who hired you to do this? You did! She shouted. Now if you'd get your dumb knife off my neck, I've got a new employee to train! And then murder! Liquid took his knife away, but held it close to his chest. Blade out, ready to slice her open if she tried anything. But she didn't. She went to the elevator that he had taken up here and rode it down to her office below. She had to fluff her feathers and straighten her dress and necklaces to undo the ruffling Liquid had just done, and then get ready to greet Bowman, who would be walking into her office any moment. But back upstairs, Liquid took a seat in front of the monitors and just watched all of this, wondering what the hell she was talking about. He wasn't her boss. He'd never seen her before. He had been tracking Solid since he had escaped from prison. Hell, he had only learned about him because he had gone to prison. Liquid spent days scanning news articles across the world on the internet, amongst many other things, doing anything he could to locate the third triplet. When he saw that there had been a trial in town, with Mar on the jury, he knew something was up. Mar didn't just show her face in public for any reason. It had to be something major, part of a very important scheme she was hatching. Sure enough, first picture of the defendants he found depicted Solid, front and center, along with two others. 
So that's who you are, Liquid said to the monitor, seeing Bowman's face. You were at the trial. Is that why she's after you? I wonder, is it wrong for me not to protect you? Liquid had hopped aboard the first flight to Cattellville the day he learned Solid escaped from prison, and had been tracking him ever since. His trail had led him here, but... What did she mean? I'm her boss? I'm the one that set this place up? I've never even been here before! Liquid thought, questioning things. It's not the other triplets doing. He's a U.S. senator. I've well accounted for Solidus. So, why did she say that? Was it just a trick? Miss Peacock waited, but Bowman never came into her office. She got tired of waiting for him and went out into the store, terrifying all the regular employees with her presence. They all cowered down behind their cash registers, unable to emerge from hiding, even to continue checking out customers until she had walked all the way past them and disappeared down one of the aisles. After some searching, she found Bowman talking with the grocery store's new butcher. So this is where you've been going during the day, Bowman said. Sweeney said nothing in return. He just reached down, grabbed a large ham, and put it on the counter in front of him, then lifted up a butcher knife, which appeared comically small in his gigantic hand, and sliced the ham clean in half in a single blow which also split the knife in half when it impacted the metal sheet on the counter too hard. Sweeney's breathing intensified. Bowman! Miss Peacock shrilly called his name. I've been waiting for you in my office for ten minutes! Where have you been? Go! Do what now? Bowman asked her. He had entered the store, forgotten what he was here for, and then just wandered around until he saw his roommate working in the deli section. There were supposed to be five people working behind the counter, but four of them were dead, hanging from meat hooks in the back. Miss Peacock had seen that earlier on her monitors, but decided to say nothing about it to Sweeney. He scared even her. Just come with me to my office right now, she ordered. We have to get you oriented so you can begin your first day! Back in her office, she realized that Bowman was no longer following her, and she eventually found him a second time, having wandered off to stare at a bag of dog food for some reason. This time she dragged him by his ear into her office. The other employees of the store couldn't take much more of this. Their hearts were about to beat out of their chests. They hoped that this time she would just stay in her office like she normally does. Going through several cardboard boxes on the floor next to her desk, she managed to find an XXL red outer price low shirt which would fit Bowman. She threw it to him, then pulled out a fresh name tag and black marker to jot his name down on it. So, your job is... Get back here! Miss Peacock shrieked, seeing him about to walk out of her office. I thought I saw that bird again, Bowman said while returning. What bird? Oh, never mind. Just, oh, sweet lord, what is that smell? Miss Peacock was taken aback by a sudden, pungent odor. It smelled like rotten eggs and cabbages. Fanning her nose, she shoved the name tag into Bowman's chest. Just take this and get out there and start begging groceries. Also, be ready to help any customer with anything they need. Look for people that may need help whenever you're not busy begging groceries. Now get out of my office and take that funky odor with you. Cuckoo! Bowman pulled his work shirt down over his normal t-shirt, put on his name tag, and went out to begin his first day of work at Outer Price Low. And then he kept going straight through the store and outside to have his first smoke break from work. Lighting up his cigarette, 
A sudden deafening shrill made him jump, and before he could even turn all the way around, someone had crossed the entire parking lot and leapt on him, knocking him to the ground in a huge hug. Bowman! I can't believe it's you! The bouncy pink-dyed hair and enormous smile could only be the property of Miranda, the girl that had shipped the two of them in her head since they had first met in high school. When did you get out of prison? Did you finally get the order for a mistrial through? Or did the appeal work? Or... Oh, hi, Miranda, Bowman said. How have you been? Why didn't you call me? How long have you been out? How long have you worked here? Miranda just kept the questions coming. Then she broke down crying, burying her face in his red work shirt. I've missed you so much. Why didn't you call me to let me know you were okay the second you were free? I, ah, uh, oh, ha, uh, oh. It had never even crossed his mind. There were lots of people he hadn't let know that he had gotten out. He hadn't even spoken with his own parents or little brother since getting out. I don't know. Oh, I know. There was this new series of Star Trek fanfics I, I just had to read. But, of course, by that I mean I had Groovy Speech read them for me. A program on my computer. Then Bowman cracked up laughing as though that was the funniest thing in the world to him. Miranda wiped the tears from her eyes. You big idiot. I've missed you so much. Uh, where are you staying now? I'm never going to let a day go by again that I don't come and see you. Since I know that you're never going to come see me. I have an apartment on Turtle Creek. I stay there with a bunch of bungholes, Bowman said. Same guys from the shop then, right? Miranda asked. Yeah, and Peter and Sweeney, Bowman added. Miranda just about choked. Fear etched in her face. No, you don't mean Sweeney, Matt, do you? The demon meat locker employee of Lion Street? Yeah, Bowman replied. Though I don't know about Lion Street. He works right here at Outer Pricelow now. He's the new butcher. What? Miranda looked towards the doors with fear. No way. You're kidding. This door doesn't even stay open until midnight. What do you mean, midnight? He works here after midnight, right? Miranda asked. No, he works here right now. Miranda thought that she might vomit from fear, the sensation so much stronger right now, after the hurricane of emotions seeing Bowman again out of the blue while going to pick up more flour from the store had caused her. I think I'm going to be sick. Miranda heaved. What's wrong? You know how the adage goes, there's always a bigger fish? The same applies to Cattailville. No matter how bad of monster you come across, there's always a bigger, badder, meaner monster. But that chain doesn't go on forever, Bowman. It has a very definite stop. A top monster. A... a top of the monster food chain, if you will. And there's no monster in Cattailville worse than Sweeney. He's someone the devil himself would tremble at. He's my roommate, Bowman said. Miranda was about to question this, but saw how genuine the words were. Like, you live in the same room with... Yeah... Bowman said. Andy seems fine to me. We both get into snore wars at night, apparently, according to Radix and Lantis. Ha! Huh, I crack up every morning when I see them looking so angry at me. They say that me and Sweeney snoring sounds like two chainsaws fighting over a noisemaker. <laughs> I can only imagine how pissed off they must be getting trying to sleep through that. <laughs> Miranda felt dizzy and needed to sit down. So she walked over to a bench and parked herself there for the time being. I want you to stay safe, Bowman, Miranda said. I've never seen Sweeney in person, but I've heard the legends. But if you two could actually become friends, 
then that's incredible. In fact, Bowman, could you introduce me to him? I want to become friends with Sweeney, too. Bowman finished his cigarette and then stomped it out, saying, Oh, sure. After Bowman went back into the store with Miranda and introduced her to Sweeney, and she gave her overly happy, Pleased to meet ya! line, Sweeney remained still-faced and dead silent, save a raspy breathing as he chopped something else in half that Miranda couldn't be certain was only pig meat as it was labeled. I think you're both fast-becoming friends, Bowman said. Okay, Sweeney, we're gonna go now. Miranda was ready to hurry away so that she could run to the ladies' room and fear vomit. But in her rush, she completely missed Sweeney lifting a hand to wave goodbye to her. Bowman got back to work for all of half a minute, which involved him staring at a random shelf and doing nothing else, before he began to head back outside for his second smoke break. Miranda emerged from the bathroom before he could leave the aisle and stopped him. I've got to get going, Bowman. But first, I have to ask you, are you familiar with this grocery store? Miranda asked, looking over her shoulder to make sure that she wasn't visible to Sweeney from here. She didn't feel safe until she was sure he couldn't see her. No, I've never been here before, Bowman replied. Ma always took me shopping at the discount surplus store. That's what I was afraid of, Miranda said. Listen, it's dangerous enough that Sweeney's in here. Actually, I guess that's the most possible dangerous thing ever. Huh. But, but there's another danger. Something not quite as visceral of threat as Sweeney, but rather more sinister. What's that? Bowman asked her. It's something that you need to be really, really careful of, Miranda insisted. Well, what is it? Bowman asked again. I'm not joking around here, Bowman. Whenever you're shopping in this store, you absolutely have to make certain not to make one critical mistake. Miranda doubly insisted. Are you going to tell me what it is, Arantia? Bowman shouted, getting agitated. The frightful tale straight from hell. What is that smell? It's hard to tell. Do you know the butt touch man with his busy, busy? I don't know the butt touch man, but I can't stand those stinky hands. If he touched me, I'd be no fan. Hoo ha, nipple punchy. It's not you he wants to touch. Let me tell you what he does. His own butt is what he'll touch, then touch the first product on every shelf. Every shelf? You mean just once? No, 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 not just once. He touches every single first, every one on every shelf. Oh! Every first product on every shelf, you say? But they're all around me. The first product is the first one you always see. What to do? What to do? Yes, I now know the butt touch man. But what is your plan to withstand? The dreadful slime dripping from his hands all across the land. When you go to pick up groceries from the store, do not ever pick up the first item on any shelf. Do I just pick up the second item? Yes. Reach back on the shelf and avoid picking up the first item. If it's a can of soup, grab the second can of soup. If it's a soda, reach back there and grab the second soda. Oh, okay. So that's how you avoid the butt touch man. After touching his butt, he only touches the first item. So you can easily defeat him by just picking up the second item. 
Oh, the butt touch man, the butt touch man, the butt touch man. Do you know the butt touch man with the stinky, smelly hands? Oh, I know the butt touch man, the butt touch man, the butt touch man. Now I know the butt touch man who hard nip open cheek, who hard nip open cheek. Well, thanks for the warning, Miranda, Bowman said. I feel like I'm now a properly trained store clerk. I can't believe my boss didn't let me know about such a thing. Oh. Well, Miss Peacock is notorious for trying to murder her own employees. So watch out for that, too, okay? Miranda gave yet another warning. Oh, my, Bowman considered. Seems that there's dangers all around me. And just when I was about to go take another smoke break. Miranda laughed at this because she assumed that he was joking, as she had just seen him out on a smoke break. She said her goodbyes and then ran to grab the bag of flour she had come here for, grabbing, of course, the second bag of flour behind the first one on the shelf. And then she went and checked it out before heading back to her bakery. In her office dwellings, Miss Peacock glared at the monitors. If she didn't plan to have Bowman killed off by this afternoon, she would be out there right now chewing his ear off for slacking and fraternizing with women instead of actually doing his job. She had planned to have her trusty butt-touch man eliminate him, but apparently now Bowman knew how to defeat him, so that wouldn't work. She got on her phone and dialed up Biscuit Die HQ. Hello, Tom, Miss Peacock said on the phone. Yes, it's me, Peacock. I need for you to summon a monster for me to eliminate a certain pesky employee. Which monster, you ask? Why, the biggest one we've got. Bowman came back inside from his second smoke break. He was starting to like this job. Nice, cool AC waiting for him on one side of the wall, and an area he could relax and enjoy a smoke on the other. Really, he didn't understand why so many people complained about work. This seemed pretty great to him. Walking right past the checkouts and not helping to bag a single bag of groceries, Bowman heads down another random aisle to stare at some packs of gelatin because the brightly colored boxes were delightful to him. A heavy, rapid stomping down the aisle resounds echoes throughout the store, but Bowman ignored it and continued going towards the gelatin. It was so close now, he could already see the sparkling, rainbow colors stretching out before him. He just wanted to get a good look at them before going out for his third smoke break. Whoever was running so fast through the store could just go around him, he figures. Whammo! Bowman was impacted from behind, and before he could yell out, Stop shoving! He felt something wrap around his neck and begin to strangulate him. He grabbed at it, but it was lubricated and slippery, and he couldn't even get his fingers to grasp it well enough to even try and pull it away. It was a long string connected to several golf ball-sized spheres. What he didn't know was that it was the big gulp lady who had just assaulted him charging down the aisle after him the second he was in her sights. And when she reached him, she had reached back and pulled out her anal beads and slapped them around his neck to garrote him with. The big gulp lady. The perfect assassin. Hey there, shop boy! Remember me? Remember what I told you would happen if you didn't give me a big gulp? That I'd make you the deadest dead I got! Now I is doing just that! Woo-hoo-hoo! The big gulp lady, 
sang out in triumph. Bowman gagged for air, then fell over, the big gulp lady laying all her weight down upon him. Bowman reached out with one hand towards the gelatin, wishing that he had only gotten to be entertained by its packaging for one brief second. No, it won't end here, Bowman decided internally. I want to see the pretty packaging! Struggling against her now, he rolled back and forth in an attempt to buck her off, but she wouldn't give up. She did get slung around, however, and then she hit the shelf and spilled several objects off of the shelf, showering them in the first items on the shelf. If Bowman hadn't already been gagging as hard as he could from being strangled, he would have been gagging that hard now. He realized that he now had butt-touch man-touch all up and down his body from all the packaging and products handled by the butt-touch man. Then the string on the anal beads broke, and all the beads began to roll all over the floor. But also, Bowman was able to breathe again. Gagging for air, he finally slung the big gulp lady off his back and turned and ran for the exit, tearing off his tainted employee shirt and rubbing his face and neck down with the untainted inside of the shirt, shivering and shuddering the whole time and desperately wanting to get home and take a long, hot shower. There's more where that came from! The big gulp lady declared as she got up and began to charge again while reaching back towards her ass but she slipped on one of the beads rolling around on the floor and fell backwards, crashing to the ground. Hearing this, Bowman realized that he may never be freed of the big gulp lady at this rate, so he quickly turned around in the parking lot, staring down the store. Outer price low. How dare you and yours... Bowman scorned the entire store as a whole. I'm a get you, Bowman! The big gulp lady cried out from inside of the store. I'm a never give up until I get you, and then you'll be sorry! The sorriest sorry he got! Woo-hoo-hoo! Oh, I don't think so, little missy, Bowman said looking his arms over, making sure that they weren't breaking out in hives or something from having butt-touch man products all over him. He clenched his fists and made a decisive call. Activate Bowman Offense Satellite Laser! With his goggles, he hijacked the nearest military satellite in orbit, aimed for outer price low, and had the satellite begin to charge its laser. Oh, I'ma get you, Bowman! I'ma get you, I'ma get you, I'ma get you! The big gulp lady sang, finally getting back to her feet, but then the fumes from the butt-touch man's butt-touched products reached out and grabbed her, holding her still right there in the aisle. Now what in the Sam hell is this? She demanded, and then the fumes spoke to her. If we have to go down, then we are bringing you with us. Fire! Fire! Bowman gave the command. And then the satellite fired on the store from space, an explosion engulfing it in an instant and rocking the entire town, a shockwave blasting out every window within several blocks, and an earthquake setting off every car alarm in town. Bowman had been knocked over by the shock wave, but was getting back up now, dusting glass and blood off of his skin as he walked away, a huge fireball lifting into the sky behind him over the smoking ruins of Outer Pricelow. Firefighters arrived on site, but Peter hopped out of the first fire engine to arrive and waved all the other firefighters back. Guys, not so fast. Remember our motto is the Southside Cattailville Volunteer Firefighters. Peter told them. 
We only save cinders! One of them called out to him. That's right! Now, everyone! Peter turned back towards the fire, ecstasy etched on his face. And let the fire burn! Amongst the smoldering cinders of the fire, Sweeney burst up from beneath several still beams, unharmed. He brushed some soot off his face, then began to head home, annoyed because this meant he now had to look for yet another job. Also out there in the cinders was the charred, near-unrecognizable body of Miss Peacock, her blackened, half-skull face coughing and choking as she tried to pry a beam off of her legs. She called out to Sweeney for help, but he ignored her and kept going, so she was left to fight for her life on her own. Strange thing was, the main thought on her mind was that all of her charming tail feathers had just been disintegrated. She'd have to get a new husband now. That was a very strange thing for someone in her position to be thinking about, indeed. Nearby footsteps caused her to glance over, and she saw Liquid standing over her, disappointment etched on his face. Liquid! Miss Peacock called out. Tell me that you remember me. Finally. Go, go. What? Liquid asked, confused. N- never mind, don't answer that. You're probably in shock. I just wanted to do you the honor of personally informing you that Her Majesty is not impressed with your performance at all. You destroyed your entire store to try and kill Bowman and we've already spotted him walking home, unharmed. It wasn't me that blew up the store. I don't know what did this, Miss Peacock insisted. Liquid shrugged. Either way, you're fired. There is no room for this level of incompetence, and Biscuit, die! Miss Peacock went to protest, but Liquid drew a gun and put a bullet through her forehead. Her head snapped back, mouth wide open, and it froze in that expression. Liquid disappeared behind the next cloud of smoke to drift by. But, high on a rooftop, or at least as high as rooftops go in Cattellville, which was only two stories, Liquid had watched that exchange through a pair of binoculars. What the fuck? Liquid demanded, not believing what he had just seen. That concludes Chapter 5 of The Apartment. Tune in every Tuesday for new chapters. If you would like to reach me, you can do so at Lantis Armstrong on Twitter. That's L-A-N-T-I-S-A-R-M-S-T-R-O-N-G. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope you'll join us again for next week's chapter, Incorrect Function.